Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now in this video, I'm gonna be going over the fourth anniversary limited edition Tourbox Tech. Now I've been using the Tourbox for the last three years and I can say it's never let me down. It's still working smoothly and efficiently. And if you're a creator or a creative in any capacity, you have to have this on your desk, guys, because this eliminated so many bottlenecks in my workflow and it's just made me so much more efficient. So I also want to thank Tourbox for sending me this limited edition version and they also signed my name on the back, which is super cool. So thank you for that. And I want to say the translucent design is amazing. It's cool. I think it's different, but I'm so glad they didn't change the physical ergonomic design because the way your palm wraps around it is just perfect. And I'm so glad they didn't change that. But there are some interesting features like haptic feedback and uh, two extra buttons that I'm very excited about but guys I'm gonna hop into blender and show you some fun things I've been working on using the toolbox deck so check it out Okay, so guys, I'm gonna hop into my Toolbox app over here and I'm going to show you my Blender settings real quick. Now, this is my Toolbox over here. You can see the map. Now, this button over here, the short button, I set it to general middle mouse click. This is the most used button in Blender because it allows you to orbit around your object and your scene. And then I also have this button, the tall button, as shift middle mouse click. And this button allows me to navigate left and right. Super helpful. Uh, another one of the most used buttons that I have is the C1 button, and that's Shift A. So this allows me to choose a primitive, a mesh object, a cube, whatever it might be. And another button that I really love, and this is actually probably exclusive to the Elite version, is this knob button. And when I press the knob button, it's the I set it to the Alt Middle Mouse button. It allows me to scroll back and forth in the timeline without actually going into the timeline. Super helpful, guys. I cannot emphasize that enough. Now I'm going to hop into Blender real quick, and I'm going to show you this one thing in my DaVinci Resolve is the use of the bokeh and the aperture in the camera is so easy in Blender. Uh, it's it's just a it's just amazing. It's just so simple, and that's and that's what we need. We need things to be simple over here i'm using my area light to uh be able to see how my light is working in this scene over here i have a rim light or an edge light and then i'm uh, seeing how it looks in my ev game engine my real-time engine uh, mode which is super helpful here i have a physics simulation with a simple collision object and uh I think the simulations are okay in Blender. I think Houdini is obviously the best way to go, but it's still great. It's still awesome. Over here, I'm drawing on my uh, on a on my 3D canvas in the Grease Monkey pencil mode. So Grease Monkey pencil is something that I really loved doing. Uh, it's just super fun to use. Uh, now over here, guys, I'm using the 3D canvas to. Uh, draw onto this building and then as you can see over here what I'm doing is I adjust the canvas over here as you can see right here and then that way I know that I'll be able to draw at that angle on top of this uh, scene so I'm able to choose my material and change it up and it's just super helpful once you kind of get into that mode in, in Grease Monkey Pencil it just flows you just start to make beautiful things and that's amazing now this is uh, as much as I'll cover it in Blender for now and uh, here I am doing some metal rendering exercises in Photoshop. And I really do appreciate Photoshop for the simplicity and the speed at which you can get your ideas down on the canvas and you're able to render out objects as if you're painting. And that's just wonderful. Over here, just to get this metal look, I'm using the color, color dodge blending mode. So that's kind of the, the, the key to getting this shiny look. You just have to layer on uh, this uh, color in color dodge and my opacity and my flow is about 40 sometimes 10 percent 20 percent depending on how much i want it to be and uh yeah i just go from there so in my next few videos i'm going to go a little bit more into detail about this process because i'm going to start to lay out more and more of how i'm thinking while i'm doing these things so uh yeah cinema 40 blender photoshop 
absolutely love these programs. I might even get into Houdini, but I'm not sure about that at the moment. But guys, stay tuned, and uh, I'm going to have some really fun and exciting projects coming up next. So yeah, subscribe, follow for more. I'll see you soon. Bye.